Don't do anything to get ahead. Don't do it because you are proud. Instead, be humble. Value others instead of yourself. Philippians 2.3 Hello Vita Kids, it is Miss Kaylee. I hope you rock stars had an amazing week. If you are a part of the beginning of the video, you guys did amazing. You did fantastic with your memory verse. And if you would like to be a part of it next week, please email us at vitakids at citylifela.org. We would love to see your face and have you be a part of the program. Well, before we get started in some amazing worship, I wanted to teach you guys some ASL, which stands for American Sign Language. It's just another way for people to communicate with each other. I know that most of us speak English. A lot of us also speak Spanish. I don't know, maybe you speak Cantonese or Mandarin in your household. Well, ASL is just another way for people to communicate if they can't hear well. So they have to use their fingers and their hands. So today, we're going to be learning how to spell two words in ASL. So first, let's wiggle our fingers so we can get ready. The first word is Bible, and we know how to spell that. It's B-I-B-L-E. -E. In ASL, it's B-I-B-L-E. -E. So the first letter, B, we're going to have four fingers up and then our thumb in the middle. Do this right here. You got it? The next one is going to be I. So we're going to make a fist and then put our pinky finger up. This is I. Then we're going to go back to B, B, and then L. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. You could see it. So we're going to put our three fingers down and then make an L shape. And then for E, we're going to do this. So just crunch your top four fingers and make an E. So it should look like B, I, B, L, E. One more time. B, I, B, L, E. Our next word that we're going to be spelling is Jesus. Spell J E S U S in A S L. J E S U S. So for our J, we're going to have our pinky finger and just make a J. Make a J. One more time. Perfect. E, we've already learned, just like this. S, very similar. We're just going to make a fist and put our finger over all top four of those. S. And then for you, we're going to take our middle and our index finger and put them straight up. Look like this. This is our U. And then our last one, like we just learned, S. So it should look like J-E-S-U-S. -S. One more time, J-E-S-U-S. -S. Perfect. So let's all stand up and wiggle everything now. Let's get ready for some amazing worship. I'm reading my B-I-B-L-E And this is what it says to me it Tells me that I'm never ever alone I'm learning how J-E-S-U-S came down to us and gave his best Without a doubt the best friend you'll ever know Our God knows exactly what I need So I remember this Let's go! When you ask, he cares When you see, he's there When you knock, 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 knock God opens up the door he cares when you see he's there When you knock, 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 knock God opens up the door oh, I'm reading my B-I-B-L-E And this is what it says to me It tells me that I'm never, ever alone I'm learning how Came down to us and gave his best Out of doubt, the best friend you'll ever know But our God knows exactly what I need So I remember this Let's go! When you ask, he cares When you see, he's there When you knock, 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 knock God opens up the door 
When you ask, he cares. When you seek, he's there. When you knock, 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 God opens up the door. When you ask, he cares. When you seek, he's there. When you knock, 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 God opens up the door. It was so good to see you guys do your ASL. If you weren't able to get it 100%, remember, it's okay. Practice makes perfect. Well, Vita Kids, these past couple of weeks, we've been learning about how to be humble. And we do that by putting others before ourselves. This week, we're going to learn about how to be humble through simply asking questions. So if you have your Bibles, take them out. We're going to be reading in the book of Luke chapter 24 verses 13 through 35. So let's get started. So there are these two men and they're walking and it's three days after the crucifixion of Christ and they're walking to a town named Emmaus which is seven miles away from Jerusalem. I don't know about you Vita kids but I get tired from walking after one mile. So they have to walk seven miles in the scorching heat and they're walking and they're walking then all of a sudden, a man starts walking with them. And they don't know who he is, but it's Jesus. And they're not able to recognize him because God didn't give them that ability. So they're walking and they're walking and then they're talking. And then Jesus asks, why are you talking so sad? And these two men said, you don't know what things have occurred these past couple of days. And Jesus says, what things. And these men couldn't believe that Jesus didn't know what had happened. So they tell him that, well, there was this man who came named Jesus. He did so many miracles. We thought he was our Messiah here to save the Israelites, but he was crucified. And then that's not all what happened. But also, there was these women who went to the tomb today and that Jesus's body wasn't there. And then they said an angel appeared to them and that the angel said that he is risen. So now we're on this walk and we don't really know what to think. And then Jesus stops them and said, you fools, how can you not see? How can you not know that it is said in scripture that the Messiah must go through all this pain before he has his glory, before he receives all his glory. So then Jesus continues to walk with them and he teaches them about scripture and about what Moses said and what we know is the Old Testament. And they keep walking and talking and then they're gaining all this knowledge and then they realize that they're almost to the town. So then they beg Jesus, please, 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 can you stay with us for the night? And Jesus agreed. So once they're all in the house, they ask Jesus, can you please bless the food? And Jesus breaks the bread. And as soon as he goes to hand them the bread, that's when they realize, wait, this man's Jesus. And so guess what, Vita kids? As soon as they realize it was Jesus, Jesus disappears. And they look at each other and said, how could we not know that this was Jesus. Didn't we feel our hearts fill with such great warmth when he was talking to us? And so they decided that they're going to run all those seven miles in the dark at night back to Jerusalem to tell the disciples what had happened to them. See, you today, kids, those two men, they knew something was different. They knew something was off but they still didn't ask like hey who are you and why am I having these certain feelings about 
you teaching some scripture, just asking simple questions that may have had them open their eyes to see who was right in front of them. Also, if you remember in the beginning of the story, they thought this guy was crazy. How could he not know what happened? But then Jesus flipped the script and he started schooling them on the scripture. See, Vita kids, Jesus isn't expecting us to be know-it-alls and to know everything. I know when I was growing up going to school, I hated asking questions because I didn't want it my classmates to know that I didn't know something. So I would sit in the back, stay quiet, be very confused through the whole lesson, and then go home and spend hours trying to figure out what my teacher was trying to teach me. Instead, I could have taken the time to just raise my hand, ask teacher, can you further explain this? I don't understand it. And you know what? I could have been helping out one of my other classmates who didn't understand. But instead, I didn't want to humble myself and put my ego to the side to just ask a question because I thought that might make me look dumb. But Vita Kids, that is not true. When we ask questions, we are not dumb. I think we are probably the smartest people in the room when we ask questions because we are seeking more knowledge and more understanding. See Vita Kids? God doesn't expect us to know everything and he's put that in scripture that we're not supposed to know everything and he sent us the Holy Spirit to help guide us. And also, God has placed people in your life like your parents, your family, your aunts, your uncles, your teachers to help guide you, to help you with those questions that are so difficult for you to understand. So I encourage you to ask them. And sometimes maybe they won't have the answers. But Jesus does, and remember like in the story that those two men, they couldn't see the big picture, but the big picture was already in the Bible. There are clues in the Bible to help you understand something. So if you don't understand, and if you have questions, try to look for those clues in the Bible. It can help tell you what's going to happen in your life. So Vita kids, ask questions, seek God. Have that encounter with the Holy Spirit so you can further understand things in life. It doesn't make you less smart. It makes you super smart. It makes you so intelligent that you want your brain to grow and that you want to understand more. So Vita Kids, I've had a great time with all of you today and I'm going to ask to close this out in some prayer. So if you can fold your hands and bow your heads. Just close your eyes so it helps us not get so distracted with everything else that might be occurring in the house. Dear Lord, we thank you for this time together that we can just cherish you and just grow with you in our brains, in our knowledge, in everything we do. I ask for special blessings over everyone in Vita Kids and that you protect their homes and that you protect their health. May these kids be able to ask questions throughout the week so that they can grow their knowledge. May them ask their parents, may they ask you, may they ask whoever is around them. I thank you, Lord, for everything and for everyone here. In Jesus' name, I pray and say, Amen. It was great hanging out with you, Vita kids. You guys all have a great week. Hi Vida Kids, it is me Yesenia and today I will be sharing with you a wonderful craft that we will be using throughout this week. Um, it is a craft that relates to the story we just heard K teacher Kay Kaylee sharing with us which was about two men that are traveling and during the course of the travel Jesus is talking to them but they don't know that Jesus is talking to them. However, do you remember when they discovered it was Jesus? It was at the table. So we will be doing a value others jar. And that's what we'll be doing this week. And this value others jar will be about praying for others because that is one of the greatest gifts we have as believers of Jesus that we are able to talk to him and share with him and pray for others. And so that's what we'll be doing today. And in this jar, I will explain what we're gonna be putting in. But first, the materials you need. You either need a jar, empty jar, make sure it's clean, or a cup, 
an empty cup, make sure it's also clean, and or a mug. Also make sure it's clean. You'll be needing two pieces of paper, some tape, scissors, and then use your scissors to cut little strips. One piece of paper is to cut out your label, which will say value others, and you can decorate that however you like. I just put a heart because I love hearts. The other piece of paper, we'll be using that when we're done with the jar. So, what you will do with the jar or cup or mug is you'll be cutting out your little label that says value others, and you can cut it out whichever way you'd like. If you wanna make cut it out as a heart or as a star, you could do that. Make sure you also have something else you'll need is tape. You'll be cutting tape and taping down your label onto your jar or cup or mug. Once that's done, we go and grab our next piece of paper. What you'll be doing with that piece of paper is you'll be cutting little strips of paper. They could be equal size. I would say at least big enough for your writing to fit. So what you will be doing with these strips of paper are you will be writing people that you love, that you care about name. So especially the people that you're thinking about right now, that you are going, um, that you haven't seen, that you haven't been able to hug, that you haven't been able to celebrate with, or that you haven't seen in class because of what's going on right now. So one of the things that we are able to practice right now as we are at home is to pray for these people. And I'm gonna write down, you know, Teacher Kaylee, who I haven't seen, I haven't been able to hug or be able to eat out with her. Um, and maybe there are people like your cousins or your aunts or your uncles. Maybe there's a teacher that you miss and you just wanna write their name down. So do that, write their name. And when you're done writing their name, you're gonna get your jar and you're gonna put it in. So each and every name that you are writing down, make sure you put it in the jar of valuing others. Because these are people you love, you value, you are so thankful for that God has given, um, given you the opportunity to have in your life. So once you're done with all the names, you filled up your value jar, you're gonna place this on your dining room table. So make sure it's on your dining room table. Whenever you go and eat, let's say breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or even a snack during snack time, you're gonna pick out one name. You're gonna pick, up one, pick out one name out and you're gonna read it. So let's say for this one, Teacher Kaylee, I'm gonna say a little prayer for her. So let's practice. Um, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for Teacher Kaylee's life. Thank you for what she's doing. Give her strength, give her peace, and I can't, can't wait to see her soon. So Lord, protect her and bless her, amen. And that's all you have to do. You just have to pray for that one person. You fold it up so that way you know that you've prayed for that person and you drop it in. Let's say throughout the week, you've prayed for everyone. So you had your strips of paper first, and then when you're done praying for them, you folded it up. So now you grab, you do it again. You grab that piece of paper, you unfold it, and you pray for that person. And this is just a blessing that we can give towards others and show them that we value them throughout the week. We can take our little jar and just be praying for each and every person because that is one of the greatest gifts we have and we can share and we can give. And that is the best part of this jar is that we can show our Lord that we value our others by praying for them and taking the time during the week to pray for them and taking the time during the day to pray for them because we love them and we're thankful for them. So there it is, your value others jar, mug, or cup. So make sure you write those wonderful names down tonight and don't forget to place it on your dinner table and tomorrow morning, call up, pick out a name and pray for them. That is it for today and I bless you guys in the name of Jesus. You have a wonderful week and always remember, one of the biggest things we can do is put others first. Philippians 2-3. Bye!